Pleasure. I had an uh, interesting experience a while back. Um, I had to go somewhere, so and I couldn't do what Copenhageners normally do and take my bicycle because it was in the shop for repair. So I, you know, I thought I'd get on a city bus and. Uh, I, I get on the bus and there's the bus driver and normally they just sit behind the wheel and don't really notice you at all But this guy he looks at me. He looks me right in the eyes and he says hey there, buddy. Welcome on board I saved you a seat right here <laughs> Awesome, that's great. You know, I, I sit in the front of the bus I got to watch this guy and he is smiling at everybody and he has a, you know a kind remark for every single person that gets on the bus and there was a really, really good mood on the city bus that day. There isn't normally, okay? Normally people just sit there looking really annoyed, but everybody was really happy on that city bus. And that is a prime example of something we Danes know as Arbeitsglöb. And I, and I realized to the rest of the world this must look really strange. It really isn't. I mean, Arbeit means work, Glöb means happiness, so Arbeitsglöb is just happiness at work. And it's not a complicated thing. It's when you like what you do. You go to work and you feel good. You contribute. You make a difference. You feel good. You like the people you work with. You like your boss. You like the customers. You like your employees. You like it there. And you know, when you come home, you feel like coming in again the next day. That is Arbeitsglöde. And my job is taking that word to the rest of the world. My job is making people happy at work all over the world because uh, oh and by the way if, in, in case you're wondering the word is pronounced like this if you're not danish it's a uh, <laughs> and here's the thing this word only exists in the scandinavian languages in danish it's arbeitsglede in swedish it's arbeitsglede i was just in norway speaking yesterday there is arbeitsglede and in finnish it's called tjölo <laughs> tjölo i like saying that um and then this word exists in no other language on the planet. This word does not exist in English. They don't have it in French. It does not exist in Spanish. They don't have it in German. They certainly don't have it in German. <laughs> and I know what you're thinking. Come on, Alex. Arbeitsfreude. There's got to be a word called Arbeitsfreude, right? So I went on Google to search for Arbeitsfreude. And Google comes up and asks, did you mean Arbeitsfreude? <laughs> Free from work. <laughs> And no, that isn't what I meant. <laughs> and it's not a coincidence that we have this word in the Scandinavian languages. We have a long tradition of focusing on happiness at work. When I speak in the rest of the world, people don't really care, especially in America. They just want you know, the salary, the bonus, the pension plan, the 401k, the perks. But whether or not they're happy at work, people don't really seem to care, and they should. It's even worse in, uh, in Japan. In Japan, there is no happiness at work, no Arbeitsglöde. They have something called a karoshi, which means death from overwork. <laughs> kind of makes you think, right? We have a word for loving your job. They have a word for your job kills you. Um, so, and I, and I want to make this perfectly clear. Arbeitsglöde is how you feel about your job. It's not what you think about your job. That is job satisfaction. And that is what a lot of people focus on and a lot of companies focus on is job satisfaction. You know. You know, I think I'll have about the right salary, and I don't live too far from work. That's nice, and, you know, we just got, you know, fresh fruit every day, and I, well, whatever, okay? That is not happiness at work. That's job satisfaction, and job satisfaction is not very interesting. A lot of people are satisfied, but not really happy. And that brings me to an interesting point. We've been hearing today that Denmark is the happiest country on the planet. You know what? We're not. We are not the happiest country. We are the most satisfied country. And how could we not be? I mean, every Dane, almost every Dane has a job. We'll have a nice place to live, a good salary. Even if you don't have a job, you can still survive on government subsidies. We are not the happiest nation. Now, I'd like to demonstrate this point. I made a deal with a, with a photographer who's present here, a really amazing photographer called Gareth Garvey. And he photographed you guys coming in this morning. And if Denmark was the happiest nation on the planet, would you guys look something like this? Or maybe uh, this? <laughs> Here's one of my favorites. <laughs> 
And I think this is the, somebody mentioned that disconnect earlier. You know, you tell Dave you're the happiest nation on the planet. And we go, huh, we are? And here's the thing, we're not. We're the most satisfied nation. And how could we not be? But on a day-to-day -day basis, right here, right now, do the, does the average Dane go around looking really happy? If you go out and start out in the main uh, shopping area right here and look at people, will they look smiling and happy and energetic? No, they won't, because we're not very happy. Oh, we are, but we're not. Uh, we're just very, very satisfied. And if you look at, if you look at this world, uh, you know, life satisfaction, we're at the top of the list. We're number one. If you look at happiness in life, we're not, as a nation, we're not even in the top 10. We're uh, just a recent study that puts us at number 12 when it comes to actual happiness. Uh, number one, Panama, for some reason. Costa Rica is in the top 10. So this is an important distinction to make. And Arbeitsklid is not about what you think about your job, it's not job satisfaction, it is happiness at work, what you feel about your job. And anyone can have Arbeitsklid. Absolutely anyone can be happy at work. And here's one of my favorite examples. This is a company in the US called Pet Butler Dog Waste Removal Services. You know what they do? <laughs> they clean up after dogs. They remove dog poop. And they're a really happy company. They have a lot, they have a lot of fun. You can check out the website, what we do, often imitated, never duplicated. Uh, it's also a very successful business. Check out the turdometer. 59 million poops scooped so far. <laughs> They're a really happy company. They say, you know what? It's true. We remove dog poop, but we're the best at it. <laughs> They're really proud. They do a good job. So absolutely anyone can be happy at work. And not only is it that you could, you should, because Arbeitsglil is really, really good for you. And this is why we need, we Danes, we need to take that word to the rest of the world. There are many reasons why being happy at work is so important. I'll just mention three. First of all, time. If you do time studies and look at, you know, what do we spend our life on? What do you spend our time on? You know, from, from you're born until you die, from cradle to grave. 71 years for men, 73 years for women. What do we spend our time on? Number one is? No, not work. Number one is? Sleep. sleep. Number two is work. You know what number, what number three is? television that scares me that really scares me so you spend more time at work than you do on anything else except sleep and when you spend that much time on anything it should be something that makes you happy something you enjoy something you actively look forward to maybe not every day but most days secondly life the good life why we're here today and there is a huge connection between happiness at work and happiness in life Positive psychology is the study of happiness in life, and they have found out, studying hundreds of thousands of people, that there are three main factors that contribute to happiness in life. I'll give you those three. Number one, the secret to a good life is a good romantic relationship. Number one factor that makes us happy in life, a good romantic relationship. And men who live in a good romantic relationship live on average six and a half years longer. Women, you only get two and a half years, I'm sorry. I was giving a presentation to a Danish company. I tell them this, you know, men who live in a good relationship live on average six and a half years longer. And I hear a female voice somewhere over there going, oh no. <laughs> so most, most important happiness factor is a good romantic relationship. Number two, friends. And we're not talking 500 friends on Facebook, okay? We're talking a few close friends who really love you for who you are. Second most, and third most important factor that makes us happy in life is a good and meaningful job. A good and meaningful job. Not necessarily being the CEO. It's not about making a million dollars. It's about having a job you like that is meaningful to you beyond just making this many hours, uh, you know, working this many hours and making this much money. Good and meaningful job. Third most important thing. And then th finally, success. If you want to be successful in what you do, it's really important to be happy because happy people are actually better at almost everything. They do a better job when you're happy, when you're in a good mood today. If you have a good day today, if you're feeling good at work, you are more productive, more creative, more, uh, more, creative, more helpful. You uh, sell more. You're even a better manager when you're in a good mood.
So if you are happy, you will be really good at what you do, and you will ultimately be more successful. Some people turn that around. They say, you know, if I work really hard, then I will become successful, and that will make me happy. Turns out not to be true. Chasing success just for success is absolutely no guarantee of happiness. Absolutely no guarantee. Chasing happiness has a really high likelihood of making you successful. Um, and also for companies. The more happiness a company has, the more Arbeitsglück it has, the more money it makes. And there are many, many studies that back this up. Um, one of our clients here in Denmark is IKEA. IKEA focuses a lot on happiness at work. Uh, the, the founder of IKEA, Ingvar Kamprad, once said that everybody should be happy at work. I mean, you spend your th a third of your life there. If you're not happy, life becomes hell. And uh, a, a local IKEA warehouse, uh, IKEA Tostrup, wanted to make their people happy. And um, has anybody here shopped in IKEA? Has anybody here been to an IKEA on a Saturday? Not necessarily a really nice experience, is it? I mean, a million customers, really stressful. And, and so the, the bed department in, in, in IKEA Tostrup, they thought, you know, how can we, we have a really busy Saturday coming up, one of the busiest shopping days of the year. How can we make this fun? How can we make this a good experience? So first of all, they all show up at work on Saturday morning wearing bathrobes. Bathrobes, they have their uniform on, on underneath, okay? But they're all wearing bathrobes. Then they arrange, uh, they arrange a pillow fight between the customers and the employees. They have 40 people hitting each other with pillows. And finally, the, the, the manager of the pet department, he hides inside one of the wardrobes. And you know, people look inside and he steps out and then he goes, can I help you? <laughs> that's happiness at work, that's obviously right there. And the, the two important things that make us happy at work, it's not about the salary. It's not about the perks. I mean, that should, you know, you should get the salary you're worth. You should get a fair salary, absolutely. If you deserve a bonus, you should get it. But the two things that really make us happy at work are results and relationships. Results is when you're good at what you do. You make a difference at something that is meaningful to you. You kick ass at work. And you can go home on a Friday afternoon and be proud of the work you've done this week. That's getting results. And relationships is about liking the people you work with. I like my coworkers, they like me, we have a great time together. Results and relationships are the two things that really, really make us happy at work. And that's where your focus should be. If you're looking for a new job, don't pick the one that has the highest salary. Pick the one that will give you results and relationships. If you're the manager and you're trying to make your department, your company happy, focus on results and relationships because that is what works. If you're trying to build a really great career, focus on results and relationships. I'll give you a great example. These wonderful ladies are four nurses from a Danish hospital. Now, uh, they just uh, finished their education and they, got, they got their first job as nurses in the children's ward of this hospital. And they're really excited about starting their first jobs and it turns out that it's a horrible workplace. Everybody is mad at everybody else. Everybody is always complaining. The nurses hate the head nurse, the head nurse hates the nurses, the doctors hate everybody. And everybody's always complaining all the time. And this is their first job. And they think, wait a minute, is this, is this normal? Is this the way it's supposed to be? And they decide that, hell no, we're going to do something about it. They don't sit down and wait for the head nurse to do something or the, or the hospital administration or the doctors. They start doing something themselves. The first thing they do is they arrange a summer party for all 50 people, all 50 employees in this children's ward. Um, and nothing fancy, you know, just a barbecue, some red wine, sang a few songs, had a great time, which creates really great relationships in the workplace. And uh, they also do something else that's really cool. Now, the most prestigious, finest medal you can get in Denmark, the finest order of the Danish kingdom is the Order of the Elephant. And part of that order is actually a solid gold enamel-covered figurine of an elephant that you see right here. That's the Order of the Elephant. They created their own version. This is it. A little elephant toy, plush toy on a safety pin. And what you can do with this is you can give this to a coworker and say, you know what, thank you so much for helping me yesterday. It was a great help to me. You get the elephant. Or thank you for being such a great coworker. I always enjoy your company. And then that coworker can wear it on their lab coat for a couple of days. 
and then they can hand it over to somebody else. And every time they pass it on, they write in this journal who, the date, who they gave it to and why. And that shows that they get great results. They're always helping each other, always making a difference. And using simple tools like that, the four youngest nurses, the four newest employees turned around the mood in that children's ward from being really stressed and depressed and unhappy to being really, really happy. It became a great workplace, which was great for them. Absolutely great for their coworkers, great for the head nurse. The doctors came in and asked, hey, what's going on? Suddenly everybody's really happy. What happened here? Fantastic. You know who really appreciated it? The patients. Sick kids and their families really appreciated having happy people around them instead of unhappy, stressed employees. So my point to you today is very, very simply this. First of all, make Arbeitsglede your number one career goal. If you're in it for the money, I can almost guarantee you, you will be unsu unsuccessful. And you will, uh, you may be successful, sorry, but I can guarantee you, you will be unhappy. Um, secondly, be happy at work, not just satisfied. Do not settle for that job that is, you know, has the good perks, the, the nice salary. Find the job that will make you happy, the job you will actually enjoy. And finally, do something about it. And I'd like to do a little exercise with you guys, so please all stand up. I will give you the simple, the, the most simple tool I know for creating happiness at work, and it's about saying good morning. Something we can all do every morning when we come to work instead of just coming in, sit down and start working. So, I want you to imagine that, uh, let's say uh, you're at your computer. You're writing this really important email. You're completely focused. And a coworker comes by and says, good morning. And then without looking up, you just go, nah. <laughs> Doesn't even mean good morning. It just means go away. Let's try that. Without looking at the people next to you, go, nah. Nah. Yeah, that's not real good, is it? That was a level one good morning. Let's take it to level two. On level two, you still don't look at people, but you actually do say good morning. Try that. Morning. Still not real good, is it? Level three, look at people and make eye contact. So you look people in the eyes and tell them good morning. Say good morning to three other people. Go. Yes, much, much better. On level four, it's not enough to say good morning. You must add something extra. You can say, good morning, it's nice to see you. Good morning, how are you this morning? Good morning, have a great day. Whatever you can come up with. Level four, make eye contact, add something extra, say good morning to three new people. Go! Yes, very good, excellent. And finally, finally, on level five, the level five good morning. The one I want you guys to do from now on is where you also touch the other person. Shake their hand, clap their shoulder, give them a hug. On level five, make eye contact, add something extra, touch the other person. Say good morning to three new people. Go. Yeah, excellent. Have a seat. So this is my advice to you. Make obviously your number one career goal. Do something about it. And I promise you it pays because the future does not belong to the clever people. The future does not belong to the intelligent people or the rich people. The future belongs to the happy. Thank you. Woo!